So our group had the Battelle Developmental Inventory, second edition. The purpose of this includes identification of developmental strengths and opportunities for learning of children with disabilities. And there are adaptations for the test to incorporate these children with disabilities and an assessment of children, particularly infants that are at risk in a developmental area is another purpose. Instruments include assessing five domains, which are adaptive, personal, social, communication, motor, and cognitive. The age range is birth to eight years old. And some um, of the tests said birth to seven years, but others said birth to eight years. So we concluded that we will stick with eight years. And the type of assessment is structured administration, observation, and interview. For the structured assessment part, it includes interviews with parents, caregivers, and teachers, and observations that take place in natural environments, which takes into account emerging and fully developed skills. And the length of time to administer is 60 to 90 minutes. The domains include adaptive, which is 60 items, personal social, which is 100 items, communication, which is 85 items, motor, which is 100 items, and cognitive, which is 105 items. And there are 450 test items total. Um, all, a lot of these are pretty explanatory for um, what we know, but the personal responsibility includes initiating play and carrying out tasks with minimal prompting and avoiding dangers. And the self-concept and social role, which is another one that we wanted to point it out, um, it assesses child development of awareness, self-worth, coping skills, sensitivity to others, and personal knowledge. And then receptive and expressive, which is under communication. Um, receptive assesses the child's ability to discriminate, recognize, and understand sounds and words. And expressive assesses the child's production and use of sounds, words, or gestures to relate info to others. And then we all know what gross and fine motor is, but perceptual motor measures the child's ability to integrate fine motor and perceptual skills for the tasks, such as stacking blocks. And then perception and concepts includes early items that assess an infant's active sensory motor interactions with the media environment. And then the later items assess the child's ability to conceptualize and discriminate object features. And then the other subdomains you can look up, but these are pretty explanatory for us. Okay, so um, as Mackenzie mentioned, this test takes 60 to 90 minutes to administer. So there is an alternative, um, the screening test. So the screening test includes 100 items versus 450 items. Um, and it only takes 10 to 30 minutes to administer. And the screening test has its own separate booklet. You only need the one and the full test is separated into five booklets, one for each domain. Uh, I just wanted to include this. This is the components of the test kit. Uh, when you go into the assessment room, you'll see that big blue briefcase that says the Battelle Developmental Inventory on it, and it'll come with all of the forms that you need, uh, the five booklets for the five domains, and all of the materials that you need for the screening test. Uh, description of administration. So as Mackenzie briefly mentioned, uh, there's three different formats for this test. So there's the structured activities, which is like the scripted uh, milestones that you're looking for. There's the natural observation, uh, which is obviously just observing the child in their natural environment, like at school or at home, and an interview with the caregiver or teacher. So this just makes the assessment very holistic and you get multiple points of view about the child. And the five domains can be assessed in any order and they can be done independently. So um, if we as OT just wanted to do the motor, we could do that. If a speech therapist just wanted to do communication, they could do that. Uh, so when you look in the booklets, uh, this is what you'll see for each item. So as we can see, this is the motor domain and the fine motor subdomain. Uh, we see the specific behavior. So the child extends a toy to a person and releases it from his or her grasp. It has the materials, uh, the recommended starting point for that item. It'll say exactly what you need to say. 
uh, and then it'll tell you what you would observe for that skill um, in the natural and observation portion. And it'll tell you how to ask a parent or caregiver about that skill. Um, and the scoring, um, as you can see, it's a two, one, or zero, and I'll talk more about that. And we have our example video. All right, Virginia. So today we are going to test your fine motor skills using the Battelle. Um, so first we're gonna start with tra uh, tracing and we're gonna trace these um, designs that have corners. Okay. So I'm gonna demonstrate. We're just gonna go down, across, down, across. Okay? Okay. Ready? I'm ready. All right. Good job. All right, so watch what I do. I'm going to make this little book with this paper. See, I fold it over this way to make a little book. Okay. Now you try. Good job. That's a book. <laughs> Now watch what I how I fold this paper. I'm gonna fold it in half like this. Okay. And then I'm gonna fold it again like this. Okay. Can you try? And then the other way? Yep. Job. <laughs> so now we're going to do the padlock. This is locked. It will not open. This key will unlock it. Can you try and unlock it? No. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna cut paper. So I'm gonna have you cut along this line right here, okay? Okay. All right, make sure you cut it on the line. Oh. Whoa. Good job. You fixed your mistake. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to practice crumbling piece of paper in one hand. Okay. So watch what I do. We're just going to crumble it like this. Now you try. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to test how you can touch each fingertip. So we're going to go like this. Now you try. Oh, all right. All right, so now we're going to take a, piece, a crayon and we're going to tie a knot over the crayon. So we're going to start and tie a little knot just like this. Now you try. I want the yellow crayon. Oh, you want the yellow crayon? Yeah. Okay. Yellow's my favorite color. <laughs> you can make Christmas colors, though. Oh, with the red and the green. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, tell me when you're finished. I'm done. Perfect. Can I make it a necklace? Okay. 
All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna catch the ball. So I'm gonna throw it. You're gonna catch it with one hand, okay? Okay. All right, ready? Yeah. Good. So the description of scoring. So um, a two on an item uh, says that the skill has been mastered or the developmental milestone has been reached. One means the skill is emerging, but it is not mastered. And a zero means that the child did not attempt the task or did the task incorrectly. And it'll show you exactly what that means for each item or skill um, on the, in the test booklet. Uh, so the basal and ceiling, if you guys think back to the Peabody assessment, it's basically the same thing. So a score of two on three consecutive lowest numbers items administered or the first item in the subdomain if a basal cannot be established. So this is just where you start. And the ceiling is a score of zero on three consecutive highest numbers items administered or the last number of the subdomain if a ceiling cannot be established. So what that means is when you're going throughout the assessment, if the child scores three zeros in a row, that's where you would stop. Uh, so the scoring is pretty annoying and complex to do, but I will try to explain it the best that I can. Uh, these are the steps, but I think it's easiest to look um, with this example picture that we have. Sorry, I think the one on the left is a little blurry. But um, as you can see, we look at this chart on the left and it has the age equivalent for each subdomain. And you guys can get that by going to Appendix A. It's in the um, administration manual. It's just all in the back. Um, so you get that for each subdomain. Then you get the subdomain raw score, which is just literally adding up one, two, or zero from each thing and adding it up and putting it in there. Then you get the subdomain percentile rank and the subdomain scaled score. And for that, you just go right into Appendix B. It's just the chart. You plug in the raw scores and you get those numbers. Next, you would add the uh, subdomain scaled scores together and you would transfer it to the score on the right. So, um, or the table on the right. So as you can see, there's 11 plus nine, you get 20. And then you go over to the picture on the right. That's your sum. Then you use that to get your developmental quotient um, and you get in that you find in Appendix C. Um, and if you want to graph things, uh, there you go. On the left, there is uh, the scaled score graph and on the right, there is the developmental quotient graph. Okay, so for the normative information, um, this test was standardized with um, 800 children that were tested um, with 100 at each age level and there was 50 boys and 50 girls and they were all ages birth to eight so 100 for each age and um, this was in one of the articles that I found regarding standardization and all of the normative information. Um, the reliability, um, it was found that the SEM um, that refers to the band of confidence around the child's test score. So the smaller the SEM, the more um, sure that the score um, is closest to the true score. Um, and that was pretty high. The test retest reliability was also good. It was retested on 183 children um, out of the 800. And it was uh, retested within four weeks. And it was found that it was 0.90 for ages 72 to 83 months and 0.99 for 6 to 11, 12 to 17, 24 to 35, and 36 to 47 months. Um, the inter-rater reliability um, was tested with 148 children, and that was found to be 0.9928 um, for kids older than 30 months that um, also had disabilities, including like sensory processing disorder. Um, and then for the validity, the content validity was also tested as well as the construct. Um, and the construct was, it was noted that they used general developmental theory, which helped to make the construct um, validity stronger. Um, then there was concurrent and then predictive validity. Um, the predictive valid validity, um, the correlations were between 0.30 and 0.62. And it was also found that it was better for older children rather than younger children. So it's more accurate with older children. So 
some of the biases that could come up with the Battelle, um, a big one would be time. So like we said, the assessment can take upwards of an hour to complete, which can be a lot for anybody really to pay attention or sustain their attention for that long, but especially a child, uh, especially if their diagnosis um, has that attention um, deficit or something um, incorporated into it. And um, then also, depending on session times, um, like a family may not have the time to complete that lengthy of an assessment, or it may take up multiple session times, um, and their insurance may only cover a limited amount of sessions, so then the child's not getting the amount of treatment that they might need. Um, you also, it doesn't take into account the assistance level of a child um, at home um, or what they may necessarily need, um, which can kind of affect how it's skewed when it's scored. And then the price of the assessment kit itself, um, we looked it up and it was over $1,000, um, which depending on where the family or the child is receiving services, they might not have the uh, financial ability to have the kit, in which case they can't even do the assessment at all. And here are our references. 